Hi everyone, I'm Rachel and this is The Faint Divinities, a channel dedicated to Daggerheart, which is the new tabletop RPG from Critical Role and Darrington Press that is currently in the final stages of development, set to release in spring of 2025. And uh, on this channel, we play Daggerheart, we talk about Daggerheart, but today we are doing something a little bit more interesting, a little bit weird. You're gonna have to hang on with us. Um, today is the first episode of, and technically a proof of concept for, my brand new interview segment that I'm really excited about called Choose Your Fighter. Fight. The show with hot wings and even hotter, wait, no, no, that's Sean Evans things. Uh, choose Your Fighter. Did y'all like that bit? That's my, <laughs> like I was telling uh, others. Anyway, Choose Your Fighter, which is going to be an interview where I focus in on one of the things we love about tabletop RPG so much, which is creating characters for tabletop RPG. Uh, Daggerheart is currently, remember, not in its final version yet, but we're going to be creating a character today with Justin, actually for our new campaign. Justin, thanks so much for joining me today. Absolutely. I'm excited. Yeah. I love making characters. We all do. Yeah. So remember, guys, that Daggerheart is not released just yet, but they do have an online nexus. You can see on your screen, I'm showing the Daggerheart website right now. But if you go to demiplane.com, they actually, you are already able to create characters in this system. So we're going to be in Demiplane today. If, as I scroll down, remember, they have a ton of your favorite TTRPGs to choose from, but we're going to dagger heart and we're gonna be getting in there but i want to let you know of one last little twist uh, those of you who have been on here for a little bit have heard that we have something really special going on tonight which is a secret guest so as we are building our character out today we are also going to be creating draft version only of some character art with our very hidden friend of the channel, Jocelyn. And Jocelyn, you're on the hey. screen. <laughs> there I am looking off camera because my camera's oddly positioned. But hi, everyone. I'm Jocelyn, or my handle, I suppose, is Joss Doodles across all my art stuff. So, yeah, hi. This is my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and again, guys, remember that. Art takes way longer than a half an hour, a full hour, which is what we're targeting to create. At the end of today, we're just going to have a draft of the art, but Jocelyn's going to be doing it live for us today, and you're going to get to watch along because, again, one of my favorite things about Tabletop RPG is the creativity that goes into building characters and building stories, and so having Justin to tell us about his character and having Jocelyn to kind of put her artist's take on some of that I think is going to be really exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and Jocelyn, if you want to wave by, because I'm going to hide you from view. <laughs> and then we're going to pull up your page. So at the very top of this, guys, we are going to start diving into this character that we are creating. Hi, <laughs> that is so good, Jocelyn. I love that. All right, so we're diving into the Dagger Heart Nexus. And remember, today's interview segment, we're going to be talking about Justin's next character for our campaign. So first, um, Justin, I'm getting into the Create Character screen, but you've had a little bit of time to think about your character. Would you give us kind of, I want to start with the class that you've selected and the ancestry in either order, and then give us a vibe, okay? Okay, so yeah, for class, I'm leaning towards a wizard, specifically the School of Knowledge. Uh, experiences are like part of, like one of the features I've used probably the least in our, you know, game so far. So I figured like this is a good way to kind of force myself into it. Uh, it's one that, you know, leans heavy uh, there. Uh, so really good to test out that feature a little more. Uh, and then for the uh, heritage uh, or the ancestry, I'm leaning, I'm going mixed, but the uh, general vibe for it is going to be leaning more in the uh, fungal side. I'm mixing uh, fungrels. Death Connection and Humans High Stamina. Um, just or we'll get to why the uh, the why it's mixed ancestry, not just full fungal, uh, possibly in a little bit. But the general vibe is he's not really a 
parasite, but kind of, you know, goes around borrowing, uh, you know, other bodies. Um, that's kind of the, well, I guess I got into it right, really, right, right away, but that's kind of the things like might be starting out playing as a, like borrowing the body of a human to kind of do stuff. Uh, yeah. That's, and yeah. We've talked about some really spooky stuff, like behind the scenes, Justin and I, I as the GM, Justin as the person who is going to have this spooky, ooky character. I think it's perfect for Halloween. Um, okay, great. So we're going to, we could circle back to a character name at the tail end, but do you have a potential name, a placeholder uh, name yep. even? Well, one that's been kind of a placeholder for me, at least, is a blusher. Uh, it's like the name of like a like I was kind of borrowing or mixing two different mushrooms. One is well, I think they're name wise. One of them is just blush uh, blusher or something like that. Blush. Where'd he go? Yeah, it's just called the blusher. I'm mixing that one with the fly agaric uh, mushroom, like just to kind of fit his vibe. Kind of these browner one with like some white spots, and this red one with some kind of uh, white spots along it. So but you know. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, give me some pronouns. Is this a he him character? A he they? Do you have an Again, idea? Again, this one, uh, they them on they on them. on Watcher. Fantastic. I love it. A fun they them instead of a fun guy in the end of the joke. Okay. All right. All right. Fantastic. And guys, we don't have any specific portraits, by the way, proof of concept here today. But in the future, I think I'm going to grab the picture of our guest and throw it in. But I'm going to use the fun girl portrait here today, which is this guy right here. And that gets us started with the items. So you said, let me make sure that I'm right here. You said mm -hmm. that you wanted to start with a wizard. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, going to uh, Great. School of Knowledge. Remember, the first piece of creating a character in, Jagger, in Daggerheart is choosing the class. We're going with a wizard. So a wizard has a lot of their own class features, but we're all pretty familiar with the concept of a wizard themselves. Um, we're going to go ahead and select that class. And then they do have, by the way, subclass. So their two subclasses are the School of Knowledge. You've gained priceless knowledge through great study and the school of war what are you kind of going for justin you're going with the uh, school of knowledge fantastic so let's go ahead and select that in and now we're going to start looking at some other pieces um but jocelyn what questions do you have from an artist perspective as you're beginning to put forth i love that jawline uh what questions do you have for our guest about the art so the first thing that I genuinely always ask for, you can see me starting to scribble. Um, the first thing that I tend to do is if you have a general vibe or personality, three key things or th uh, th traits, key features, quirks, those sort of things help with posing and facial expressions. And those are the first things I need to pin down even before I know things like class. Um, so if you have a few little quirks that you wanna throw out there or anything specific you want, uh, if you like the job line that I've started, those sort of things, um, that would be appreciated at this stage. Gotcha. Hmm. I know I'm real bad about like setting a personality ahead of time because I tend to like, like whatever I start playing as first session is what I really lean into. Uh, just kind of, you know, once I get, you know, get the shoes on. Um, but I know we are starting out kind of, I don't know if uh, Rachel, if we want to talk about whose body I'm borrowing at the start or we want to keep that for the first session. I think it's uh, fine. Listen, we're diving in. You guys that are watching this are getting the inside scoop about what is happening. So Justin, let's go ahead and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, so we're starting out. Uh, I'm going to be borrowing the uh, body of the captain, the one that killed my previous character. Uh, I'm sure the other players in the party that are in the chat are going to, you know, enjoy that, bring around the person that killed their friend. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's kind of, my, my thinking kind of for his vibes, always kind of looking over his shoulder. I mean, that's literally what the, uh, <laughs> the uh, suggested pose that I was kind of going with, because uh, like, um, like kind of most of him kind of comes out through the nape of the neck and kind of runs down the uh, chest on the other side. That's where all the like, kind of mushrooms are growing out, but he's like, he himself is embedded inside. Uh, but, you know, that's kind of an area he's always kind of protecting there. Um, you know, people kind of sneak up, might try to pluck stuff off and uh, that's dangerous. Uh, but uh, it's kind of, kind of uncertain, but also just, you know, curious, curious about the world and likes exploring. Uh, so yeah. Good. I, 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 I'm not, not great on emotions until I like really try them out. 
This is, but that's great because this kind of, I think another thing that is super cool about this rubric is it makes you think a little bit harder about what your character concept is. So Jocelyn, does that give you some more context? Do you have other questions you'd like to dig into today? This is mostly your corner, you know? How old is this captain? Am I putting wrinkles on him or is this a young strapping lad? I can take it from here, Justin. Don't you even worry about this. So this is our uh, Commander Augustus Kane. Now this man, it's, it, I don't know if you uh, watch Doctor Who at all, Jocelyn, but oh, in, I do not. Uh, in my idea, Sadly. he is Jack Harkness, which is a character, he's young, a twinkle in his eye, like he's got that rugged, like, jawline but also his hair kind of flows in the wind a little bit it's short but this is a handsome firm jawline dude before he was um was it decapitated was it decapitated i think <laughs> i think it was maybe his face blown off a little bit you could ignore that he doesn't have to have a blown off face but yeah MC Cat, an excellent point before Face of Bow. Yeah, yeah. And Queen. Care Bear Dare, Jack Harkness, what a sexy shroom. Absolutely. We did mention my character kind of does kind of crawl in, like, wherever he can through, like, possibly through the eye. Yeah. Uh, and so if we did want to have, you know, part of that face, I don't know how graphic we want to be on the character art, but, yeah. uh, you know, blowing off part of the face, mushrooms just popping out of there instead. Yeah. Uh, Exactly. Guys, get into it because I see you guys agreeing with my Jack Harkness lust in chat. This is the whole concept is that I wanted to throw a real humdinger at my players. And so he was this just chipper, jolly guy, real firm handshakes and stuff about his business until he got really dark and a little bit evil. They they did kill him, so don't worry guys, we are firmly against that. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I love Crazy Deadpool says, must Google this Jack, please do. Jack Harkness, oh my God, wow. All right, um, perfect. Jocelyn, any last little questions you have for us before we dive into Justin a little bit more? I think that I can do, I can work on the posing and anatomy for a little bit at the very least. So I will start doing that. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. So Justin, pulling this back into the interview segment about you, because I, again, tabletop RPG is about creating characters, but a lot of it is an expression of who you are. Not everybody, but a lot of the time you find little beats, bits and pieces that are you because you can only pull from your own experience. Mm -hmm. I have known you for the better part of a decade, and I realized that I never actually asked this question, so I was really excited about interviewing you. How did you get into tabletop RPG? Hmm. I think it was 2015 or so. A couple of friends, I was roommates at the time in college. Um, like, th I think some like in our workspace, like uh, several people had been watching Critical Role. I didn't get into it until a little bit later, but uh, like that kind of conversation wise, that was coming up along with Stranger Things, and so it just kind of really kind of pushed people into like wanting to try it out. And so like my group of friends tried it. I think the one that had initially DM'd, he had played in a couple games pr uh, before that. Uh, and then like literally after we finished that session, I'm like, all right, I'll try out DMing. Went terribly, I killed the party. Uh, didn't know, not great at balance, but you know, it got better from there. Uh, <laughs> or yeah, you were the best GM ever. Yeah. You won the game immediately. Listen, exactly. I've never TPK'd a party ever. <laughs> like, like, I mean, they, they got to go through like, you know, a little bit of exploring, you know, found, found a thing, save it, brought it back to town or like wasn't the process of saving it. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, yeah uh, Big Bad had some uh, fireball ability and that kind of killed everyone. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that that makes sense to me. Like as a GM, you see fireball and you're like, that would be super cool for my adversary to have. You're like, y'all are level ones, ones, cool. <laughs> Exactly. That's but so yeah, so cool. I learned a lesson in balance <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> I love that because I didn't know that that was your background into tabletop, and I have a similar thing. It's not an uncommon story. Again, like eight, nine years ago, when people were like, I got into, oh, I like the, the like look, so I'm screener, but when people were like, I got into tabletop because of things like Critical Role, some people kind of shirked back about that. I think that that is gone because so many of us got into it from Critical Role. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, and it makes me, again, just all the more excited that we're moving into Daggerheart, Critical Roles, and Daring to Presses, their publishing house's system. So that's so cool. 
would uh, just to expand on that a little more like that was the initial kind of like first two games or so uh, and then like shortly after that we've tried we played a couple more in the house and then eventually like i was like okay i want to play more y'all are busy with school whatever else and then just like that's where i started playing adventures league and met y'all honestly that was very shortly after uh but yeah i think as you're kind of describing like how how we pick our characters and how we choose to like play them act them out does kind of pull a lot from us and like uh, a good chunk of my initial characters were all like kind of like same vibe it's you know I was playing them with, like shorter characters that were you know talking above their uh, above their well uh, or you know fine above their weight class kind of thing. I was most of my initial characters were like halflings or gnomes with big swords and stuff. Not that I'm not a short person, but that's just like I don't know. There's something in there about a charismatic short guy with a uh, like weapon that's bigger than they should have uh, and just you know getting themselves in trouble. <laughs> but you know, this that, is that's why be a, a vibe for most of my characters generally. This is why I wanted to do this whole interview concept is because I just really love talking to people about what they are doing in tabletop RPG. That's so sweet. I had no idea. And also, again, because the only tabletop experience I had before I played with you was exclusively with the same like four people for a year. I thought that you had been playing for a long time. So that's so Maybe cool. You're at that point, if yeah. not half a year. Yeah. So. Okay, perfect. Let's keep building out this character. Also, just real quick check in. Jocelyn, I am loving the hat. It's looking great. <laughs> It'll get cleaner eventually. Yeah, it's so cool. I freaking love this. Oh my God, the zoom in. <gasps> you guys, take a look at those mushrooms coming up across the face. And oh, check out that contour. Wow. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's dive back into creating this character a little bit more. So we have traits. So remember guys, in Daggerheart, just like any other tabletop RPG, you are going to have traits that define what your character is good at, what your character is less good at, you know? Um, they do have suggested traits to utilize. Um, now me, I'm a suggested traits girly. I love going with suggested. I know that Justin is not a suggested traits girly. Um, how we feel it over here, Justin? <laughs> well, I, initially, yes. I like when I was first kind of coming through this, trying out myself. I immediately unchecked that, then we started to go through them. And I was like, "Hold up! I picked all the I, I ended up choosing all the suggested ones for this character." Really? But, uh, yeah. For for this one, I like in, unintentionally did. I'm like, "Oh well," I end up just toggling the thing back. Like, great! I don't have to keep up with that in the future. That's so good. Do uh, I get to hit the just you suggested traits button here? Is that what you're yeah. <gasps> What a treat! Okay, great. Like, so, like, for, for reasoning though, on this character, like, I was thinking, like, he, if he is someone that's constantly borrowing, like, other people's bodies, uh, he's gonna have to lean more into his, like, own wits and stuff. So, that's why I lean kind of more of those, you know, instinct, presence, knowledge kind of stuff. You know, he never knows what he's gonna get on the physical side. Yes. Uh, and yeah, so that was my, that was my reasoning for it. That's incredible. Uh, I love that. So, guys, we're looking. At this person having a where so remember that the standard array here is kind of similar to what you might see in a Dungeons and Dragons in a Pathfinder um, you're gonna have things that you are naturally worse at and naturally at better at but you get to decide where those go um, although you kind of want to have a, your highest one in whatever you're attacking with probably uh, with our wizards we know that they are really good at knowledge they're very knowledgeable people that's your plus two stat mm -hmm. for this guy um then you have in your negative one the far other side is your agility he's not he's not quite so fast which makes sense to me he's a little bit of a shambling creature if you will so yeah i love that okay yeah. so for you though justin if you were in the dagger heart system to assign yourself i want to know your best and your dumb what would you give yourself as your best trait uh, in these kinds of areas? I feel like mm -hmm. I know, but I want to hear from you. I mean, I'd probably lean instinct, honestly, for my plus my, my plus two area. Mm -hmm. uh, negative one, uh, it's definitely changed over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, listen. <laughs> let's see. Um, let's see. What would that be? Nowadays, probably still agility, uh, <laughs> where, you know, previously it probably would have been more of the, like, you know, strength. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I feel like a lot of us as when we met, we were in our younger 20s. Maybe we were a little bit faster. Never me. Never me. I was never a sprinter. Um no. I was in the process of slowly getting out of shape since then. <laughs> That's what I mean. At this point, we're all in our 30s. A lot of us have kids, not me, but a lot of us do have kids and stuff. And so this, some of these things have got out the window. This is incredible, though. You said you would give yourself your plus two, your highest modifier in instinct. Why do you say that? Can we dig into that a little bit more? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, debating in my head. I like, feel it'd be instinct or knowledge because, like, looking at the, like, uh, like, examples they give for each, like, uh, like being able to recall stuff uh, that is like a very big skill I have like I just like I, I mentioned before like when I was running my uh, however long that the indie game was two and a half years I was just hardly took any notes the whole time I'm like pulling stuff out of like sessions from like over a year or two back and just like out of nowhere and stuff like that uh, I do the same at work uh, so cool. but so that, that might be a reason for leaning more knowledge uh, but I'm just thinking more like kind of gut instincts uh, just that kind of stuff thinking more you know just the general kind of wisdom uh, kind of section. That's where I'm leaning more instinct. Yeah, but, I love that. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Okay, well, thank you though so much for sharing. Let's let's move on to the next piece of this. So we've set our traits. I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit, guys. So we've set our traits. Now we're gonna get some starting weapons. Oh nope, we're yes, perfect. <laughs> okay, so with our starting weapons, really you can choose anything. Um, now I think that it does let you know as part of the character. And again, I'm gonna make a note for myself here. Uh, which is that proof of concept. If I'm going into this with someone who's less familiar with Daggerheart, I'll probably pull those suggestions for the class that they're picking. Um, but do you know what you wanted to go with in terms of your starting weapons? What is your concept there? Yeah, so I mean, kind of a lot of the time you have to lean into like what it's built for the class, unless you're like trying to like, you know, a little homebrewing or like tweaking stuff where it could be like, you know, one of these other items that is based on knowledge instead of these other ones. But just looking at the ones that are for knowledge, it basically ha has to be the uh, like great staff and the wand. And I might just, since, you know, if he's picking up this new body, he may not have one he totes around. We just have to like kind of, you know, build one out of, you know, pull, pull a plank off a nearby ship. Uh, that might be what I'm using to start. A hundred percent. I love that. That's so cool. Yes. Okay, great. So we have a great staff that probably will be a plank to start with, maybe with some mushrooms all along it. Also, mm -hmm. God, speaking of mushrooms, this art is going so well, Jocelyn. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> so we have the great staff. And then uh, that moving on, we are going to also add from the second listing. Because again, you get to start with two. So you help. said wand. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, great. Full caster stuff. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And still, still thinking uh, on it, but I may do something fun, like maybe, again, starting with the pirate. So I may have like a cutlass and then the wand and just kind of rocking those might be might be fun, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. The min max in, my, in the back of my mind's saying no, but we'll see. Sounds Absolutely. fun. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I love that. Okay, so let's move on to some starting armor for this character. So what are you thinking of for your armor? There's a pretty limited list here at the mm -hmm. beginning, which I like. I enjoy this. Um, and remember, guys, in Daggerheart, we're narrative driven. So you won't necessarily be wearing this. This is just helping to dictate what your uh, like evasion is, for example. So go ahead, Justin. And on that, basically going with the uh, Gambitson armor to get that plus one to evasion. Uh, if I'm playing a wizard, I gotta try not to get hit. <laughs> yep, fantastic. And that Gambitson armor, that's the lightest version. Incredible. So, we have now gotten through a few of the other items. We're going to do one last piece, and then we're gonna dive into some more questions about you. So, let's go ahead and start, get your starting inventory. You get to choose in Daggerheart. Oh my God, that jawline is looking so great. Um, also, Care Bear Dare. For a second, I read chainmail armor as charisma armor. That's what that's what I put on every day. <laughs> I gotta get that plus one modifier boost. The nostril, Jocelyn. Wow. <gasps> God, I love this rubric. It's so good. Okay, fantastic. So. In Daggerheart, a health potion is going to restore your health. A stamina potion is going to clear your stress. 
So what are you thinking, Justin, from your side? For this, the uh, class for this one does have a lean into stamina, so I'm probably just going to start with that stamina potion there. Fantastic. Uh, since I can just, you know, instead of spending hope to get experience or use experience, I can do that. Yeah. Just, you know, I love hope that. get a little bit of that back. Great. Uh, and then, yeah. And then you either, as your kind of additional item, you either get to have a book you're trying to translate or a tiny and harmless elemental pet. Which one? Yeah, so since I'm playing a mushroom, you know, feeling very earthy, uh, definitely leaning towards the uh, tiny harmless pet. Okay. Uh, I think I got, got, got a little bird, a little, little rock bird. That is so cute, Care Bear Dare said. Elemental pet, oh yeah, 100%. So a little rock bird, I think, because again, uh, a little glimpse behind the curtain, guys. We talked a little bit about some of these concepts with Jocelyn beforehand, so she had some details. So this bird, oh my God, look at him coming to life on the screen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it, guys. Oh my God. What color is this little bird gonna be? Oh. Um, thinking mostly kind of like a dark browns, kind of like grays, kind of uh, that kind of vibe. Oh, uh, so yeah, I'm thinking like I definitely need a little buddy, especially to help me move between body to body. If I'm just you know whatever I have buried inside of this body, I need to get it out and put into somewhere else. If I need to swap out a new one, this one gets a little worn out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's. And you know, being a rock bird, you probably can't fly very well. Oh, uh, oh no, I didn't think about that. <laughs> that's so cute. Or he's just ripped. One of the two. I, I don't know. Buff bird, get, just like two guns. Just I call her <laughs> Lucy and. Lawless, you know, <laughs> we have, uh, oh my God, we have, everybody is loving it. First of all, angry eyebrows on this. Oh my God, the muscles. <laughs> Just... <laughs> so, so you're, you're suggesting we name the bird Xena, right? Yeah. Oh my God, we have to. What else would you name this little guy? Look at it. Oh my God, he's amazing. I love it. I love it. Um, fantastic. Sierra saying, oh my God, a little shoulder bird. Absolutely. Muscles. Bun Bun Riri, who we recently played for the queen with, said, it's a feisty buff bird. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> like a feisty buff bird. God, this man is looking so hot. I know he's like slightly dead. Still hot. Love it. Okay. All right. Cool. So now... This part I really like, Justin. This is deciding what you carry your spells in. And this is where you get to really go wild in terms of how you're casting this. What's your concept for the character? Yeah, and so thinking on this one, he's less about, you know, being a, you know, book nerd. He's more of, you know, a little more natural mm -hmm. uh, using his own, uh, using his own tools. Uh, and I think he's literally like growing these mushrooms on the body to just, you know, pull off and use. Uh, thinking like they each, you know, maybe grow into whatever, you know, components and whatnot are needed to like if i get some fireball like spell you know grow that that day of uh whenever i'm choosing my domain cards kind of thing that's um, cool. pull off mushroom chunk it or you know bat it off with my uh, great staff <laughs> oh so cool yes i love that's, that. you know, that's almost like a bandolier across them yeah. that's amazing okay fantastic Okay, so that is really getting us a lot of the context of what this character has built around them, right? So I think this is a good point to really pause and talk a little bit more about you, Justin. So you've been playing tabletop RPG now for something around like eight-ish years, it sounds like, something in that mm -hmm. range. Okay, do you have a thing that you love most about tabletop RPG? What is it that keeps you in this hobby space, you know? I definitely like the just the variance. Every every session, there's always something different. Every game is very different. Uh, the I, I know like the one, one thing that kind of... Uh, sells it for me the most that a lot of other games can't do, especially like video games can't, is like being able to set something up and let it grow over months, years, and seeing like an outcome like in a world years later. Um, one I did where I was playing a, uh, it was like a shared, uh, uh, it was at a bar called Vigilante here in Austin, and um, they do like, there are eight or so, eight or ten tables, and each one like there has their own DM, and it's like in a shared world. So like something happens at this table, it can affect others as like they kind of move like you know move from section to section of the world. Uh, and so like one thing I did, I had a druid at the time, and I basically like 
I don't want to say ruined a city by just casting plant growth overnight, but it was, there's some other, you know, uh, homebrew stuff that was happening in that campaign, but, you know, plants growing up caused a bunch of havoc. And so as uh, like we moved on, some other players got to come in and check out that town. They're like, what the hell happened? Some evil villain probably did this kind of thing. It's like, oh no, it's just those dumb goblin. Uh, you know, another trend for me is, you know, dumb goblins ca causing chaos. That but, is yeah. a trend for you. I love that. But yeah, that, that's something that's you can't really do in other games. Like you, you might can do stuff that impacts certain players or something multiplayer stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, that's the, so cool. the world impacts are fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's true. I, 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 obviously there are games that try to target that as a concept, right? For like civilization types of games, Civ and things like that, where you get to see the progression of the civilization, but then you're necessarily removed from the concept of a smaller plot line. I don't, mm -hmm. it's just the coding and the programming that would go into something like that except in something like World of Warcraft, right? Where they do that pretty well in MMO RPGs, which maybe is another reason that I like those. Do you play any MMOs? Uh, not, not in a long time. Have really. you ever? What did you play? I, back in like high school and junior, I played like some, a lot of RuneScape. Ooh, very good. Deep cut. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what, uh, so in both of those role-playing games, right? Mm -hmm. You said that I've heard two kinds of tropes that you've kind of listed. One of them is small boy or smaller boy uh, with uh, with big weapon kind of fighting mm. against the odds kind of seems to be the concept. Yep, yep, definitely the, definitely the theme. Perfect. And then another one is goblin. This does not making things crazy and truly going wild. These don't seem too different to me, honestly. Oh, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> okay, okay. What, like, I really want to, I know you've already answered this, but I kind of want to dig deeper into that. Is that because that's something within you that you feel, or are you just drawn to the story of heroism? Where's that coming from? I, I, I definitely, I, I, the specific parts of it I definitely lean towards is, you know, just causing chaos, uh, getting to do things in games that you don't normally do, like, even if you play in like D and D, dagger heart and stuff, they'll have stuff pre-written. This will probably be what happens, but then I always try to find the thing that isn't planned for. You know, not to make the DM work, but that's what happens. Uh, it's fun. Uh, they challenge us. We gotta challenge them back. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the stuff I lean into the chaos part. And when you're having to work against the odds, you have to use more tools, and that's just more also variants. Like uh, if you're playing a small guy with a big weapon, you have to find ways to like, you know, overcome the uh, challenging role uh, to make the hit, maybe having to actually strategize a little more. So kind of extra challenge there. And that's uh, trying to relate that back to like me personally. I, 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 a lot of time I might not have the skill personally, but I will try to find other tools and stuff to leverage to get things done. Uh, that's so cool. I love that. I think that does. I don't know that I ever would have necessarily thought those things about you which again is why i like these kinds of conversations because i definitely can see that when i when you dig in i can definitely see that about you and your play style we talk about that a lot your characters are always off the beaten path you you never have like just the standard you could see today i was like there's no way he's picking the standard traits and you did it they just happened to be the standard traits so <laughs> Yep, I instinctively just turn that off. All right, what do I want to do? <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so we have to keep, unfortunately, we have to keep building this character. I love that it becomes just more dialogue and stuff. But building the character, remember that as part of this game, you have options at level one of different spells or abilities that you can take. As a wizard, most of these are going to be spells. Now, for this concept as an interview we can't go in depth on everything today um, mm -hmm. now i know that you have the advantage of seeing a lot of these in advance but you basically have six that you can choose from split amongst two domains one being splendor and one being codex these are two different domain groups um, so for example you have the book of ava codex which gives you a power push spell to push and blast an enemy back 
or you have the mending touch splendor skill where you lay your hands on a creature and channel healing magic to help close their wounds taking a look at some of these items what really are you feeling your character would be leaning into more of the splendor healing life side of things or more of the wizardy codex book knowledge powerful stuff so like i just mentioned i like having the i have an option to having tools to work with so i'm definitely going to be leaning more into the codex side right. literally with everyone i get multiple options yeah. um and so i get to you know get to bend that a little more uh and probably gonna do that with both of my starting ones. Um, I may lean into like picking up a couple healing ones that are maybe a little more powerful, uh, higher levels, just so I can help the party out, you know, keep more dwarves from dying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you gotta, yeah. listen, we gotta keep the dwarves from dying and explosions and more explosions, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was my own fault, you know, picking up tools along the way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so for the two I'm looking at, it's the Book of Ava you mentioned and the uh, Book of uh, Iliot. Okay. Uh, mainly for that one for the uh, telepathy ability since I won't have that as my um, fungal uh, since I split the ancestry That's um, right. leaning yes. towards that one so I can maybe do my own like more localized version of it um, incredible guys so I'm zooming in on one of these as an example book of Iliad you had said specifically the telepathy is one of the pieces you were looking at you can open a line of mental communication fantastic so that kind of and again these abilities help us know a little bit more about the character it's not just well what spells are you selecting they literally tell us about the character oh wow I've lost the uh there we go I had to zoom way way farther in okay great and the book of Ava is another codex item oh, again it has that power push spell also ice spikes Tavas or Tava's armor what was it that you were really interested in about that I remember on this one I'm thinking it was more of just having that uh was it the damaging ability I think it was the uh, the damaging ability for it just seemed really enticing uh Yes, yeah. Out a few of the other ones. That power push is really powerful. So I do like to, again, I have to avoid just continuing to talk about this art because you are killing it, Jocelyn. This is wild. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. This shading is crazy. Um, but I do want to dive in because I like to pull in the community where I can. The final brain cell asked, for your character, how would you heal the party members? If you were to take Splendor at some level, would you feed them a mushroom on your character? What would that be? Uh, I definitely think it depends on like how they're getting wounded. It could be more of like lending some of my own kind of regrowth, you know, stitching things back together kind of abilities. Maybe literally like planting a little thing inside of them and that like regrows the wounds. It may, you know, they might have to deal with a mushroom on them for a little bit. Oh. Uh, so yeah. good. you're on the dark side opposed to you know the like you know mushroom tea or whatever uh oh yeah yeah we're we're going into the oh so yeah. fun okay all right so we've taken our domain cards so now we get to move into we're kind of rounding out the character so we're gonna move now into our heritage items so we've already talked a bit about the ancestry. Um, the ancestry, remember, in D&D, &D, this would uh, be the race. But you see a lot of tabletop RPG is moving away from that vernacular. So I know that we are doing mixed ancestry, right? So you're going to mm -hmm. choose two items. And we're starting, the primary for the look is, of course, we had already said Fungril. Which, where is our fun grill? I've lost, there we go, fun grill right here, which resembles a mushroom in humanoid form for everybody. So this is gonna be the first one. We're gonna take that. Um, and then, uh, actually, what's the, what's the mixed ancestry name you'd like to select? Oh, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Yeah, listen, when you do it on Demiplay and if you go mixed ancestry, you can make oh, up a right. name. So this is. I, I've, I've clicked mixed ancestry on the on a couple of characters. I just overlooked that entirely. Um, <laughs> so this is part fungal and part what? A human to start, since that's what I'm, you know, okay. paying you back on. Uh, I think I might, you know, for the name, uh, I'm trying to think of what that would be. Yeah. Uh, how I described it to you and like our uh, DM, I was thinking where to go. What about fungal? Uh, I kind of described how he got into that situation, which. <gasps> Let's see, I'm trying to find where that message went. 
Um, okay. um, Humgrill is very good, Care Bear Dare. Absolutely. Humgrill or Humgrill is very good. <laughs> like, swap that out with, as I, if I switch to different ones, that just gets a little tweaked. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, because but, you were saying when you would, go ahead, I think you found it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was saying, I think when he was, oh, or when this person was, he was a full fungal, got into some accident when exploring some cave or something when he was young, or when they were young. Uh, maybe it was like an off limits area, uh, and they basically had to get a full body, a nearly full body transplant, and just you know basically pull the mind out, put it into something else, uh, and that's where I think I'd re uh, rediscovered the uh, other suggested or the possible name I had, which is possibly going to the name of Delver. Uh, you know, they gave that to more of a, as a nickname, uh, and then just kind of ended up sticking with them. Uh, I'm glad I found that old note. <laughs> so good. Okay. Okay. I, but uh, I, yeah, so that was uh, to kind of get back to the mixed ancestry. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of what that uh, situation would be like. You know, they had to go through basically a traumatic uh, surgery, get a lot of you know transplant, transplant surgery kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'm trying which, to think what, how that can mix into it. Because that's but. kind of what we're doing with that. Is that and again, this is not technically mm -hmm. rules as written, but uh, Justin, as he if he chooses to go to a different body at some point he might take on something else the human aspect of this is not necessarily our friend blusher it actually is commander augustus kane so very cool i love that um let's just call the mixed ancestry name fungman right now i don't want to get too too hung up on that I'm piece. Also like, trying to flo like floating the thing like around the word transplant remove plant add in fungus uh, um, I, I love that so much <laughs> like I, I I'm actually you know what I changed my mind I'm gonna go with Care Bear Tears we're gonna get the community involved here we're going Hume Grill That's Grillman good. Hufelman <laughs> Shrewman no it's it's Shrewman for sure are you kidding me Bun Bun Re Be oh, Bun Bun Re Re that is incredible okay well done all right, so we're going to, as part of this, when we go for the mixed ancestry piece, we get to choose multiple. Now, it's been a while since I have selected that piece. Uh, we have to, I know, exit out of the ancestry yeah, page. Yeah, you take mixed ancestry at the top, and then it will take you like another step after that. Yep, yep. There is, so when you go mi mixed ancestry, you have to navigate out and then go to the top and the bottom, because if you're going mixed ancestry, you choose part of it and part of the other. So let's choose your top feature. So when we're looking at the top feature, do you want to choose that one from the fun grill piece or the human piece? Yeah, so I'm thinking since I've I'm disconnected from my group and I'm you know my, my group being the uh, the other fun girls, yeah. I'm probably gonna lose the uh, ability to like um, blanking on the name for it, but the like mental connection the from a fun network. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'm losing connection to the network. That's why I picked up the other spell to kind of replace that ability, uh, and then keeping the death connection uh, for the fun girl. Okay. The top one I'll swap out to whatever I'm. Where I'm switching to. Then for the human, that is high stamina that you're getting. You get to take an additional stress slot at character creation. Also, MC Cat saying Shrewman is how I will refer to it going forward now. Uh, 100%. Absolutely. That's our top feature because we're going mixed ancestry, which means for the bottom, we're going to choose the fungrills option. Again, mm -hmm. these two options would be for human, it would be adaptability. But for fun grill, we're getting that death connection. That means while touching a corpse that died recently, you can mark a stress to extract one memory related to a specific emotion or sensation. Yeah, so I'm thinking that'd be very helpful if I'm ever like, you know, borrowing a body and can possibly try to look like them for a brief amount of time. Yeah. You know, pull something about their, about their history. Yes. Uh, Ooh, so good. Okay, so that gives us our concept of your ancestry. That's only half of your heritage. The other piece is your community. Um, so your community is where you're from. So for example, if I was choosing my community, it would probably be uh, the wild born because I grew up in a forest very far away from a city. Um, what are you thinking for your character? Uh, rich kind of person, studious, in the mountains? Give me a vibe. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking kind of leaning towards uh, the order, order born community. One, because we I, I haven't seen that one played with or like uh, not a lot. I think we had like a one character and a one shot at it. Yes. Uh, but that's what I'm wanting to kind of test out a little more. It's also, uh, it's not exactly like more experiences, but it's kind of similar. Yeah, um, it is. But yeah, so one, one to kind of fit that vibe. Uh, it's, and I think when we chatted about it previously, it was kind of like, what were the uh, like laws of the street kind of thing? Since he's not really a uh, like urchin type, yep. but it's something kind of similar. Uh, kind of, you know, having to survive out in the wild, but you yeah, know, various locations. Uh, yes, absolutely. In communities that may be a little bit mysterious, but mm -hmm. so in order born. And again, we're taking because you want to take these key concepts in Daggerheart or any tabletop that you're choosing, and you modify it to fit your vibe. An Orderborn starts as being part of an Orderborn community means you are from a collective, collective being the emphasis here, that focuses on discipline or faith of some kind. You uphold a set of principles that reflects your experience there. And your feature as part of this community is the dedicated piece. So you're going to record three sayings or values your upbringing instilled in you. And once per short rest, you get to describe how you're embodying one of these principles and you get to change out the die that you roll for your hope die, making it a better chance of rolling a success with hope very powerful i actually some people are like ridgeborn is op i think orderborn op honestly for me not op but very strong okay it was very difficult or very or very hard not to just you know be another ridge bro uh but yeah this this one seemed interesting to try out yeah absolutely so we have to keep this part super brief because the order board has this additional piece. But do you have an idea of any of your sayings at all? We don't have to do all three. I don't, I don't have the specifics yet, but when we chatted last, I think that kind of the vibes like laws of the street, and it could be very different things from that. Yes. Um, but yeah. I, I don't have what those specifics will be just yet. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna put only only the strong survive as like a first like rules of the street kind of concept. I know this is not going to stay, but again, you get to record three for this one. Okay, fantastic. That gets us through all of our heritage. Now we're closing up here. We're getting near to the end of our character. This next piece is going to, we're going to use this to talk. So inside of Daggerheart, you have all kinds of additional pieces choosing your description we've talked a lot about what this character looks like today background questions you can dive into details about your specific character's background but my favorite piece here is choosing your experiences in daggerheart your experiences are kind of, if you were coming from Dungeons and Dragons, they're kind of like your proficiencies. So things that your character for some reason are very good at. So in D&D, &D, you might choose um, acrobatics, right? As something you're very good at. You get an additional modifier when you roll. The thing about Daggerheart is though, that you get to decide what those experiences are. So you might choose home chef and be like, anytime that I'm in the wild foraging, I know which mushrooms are going to poison you or not because I cook a lot at home for my family. You get to decide what those are and you get a plus two for those. So, Justin, before we dive into your characters, would you tell me about you, Justin? Just one one thing if you were defining an experience on your own justin character sheet what would that be just 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 one it doesn't have to be the biggest one but you know one that has influences mm. and shaped your life that's a hard one i'm not sure even thinking for the character yeah you're um, welcome you're welcome we're doing the interview thing this is a crazy rubric mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So an experience for myself. Yeah. Uh, hard one. Yeah. What's something formative about the way that you grew up, for example? Hmm. Trying to think, like like yourself from, from out in the woods. Uh, yeah. Definitely had to like pick up and learn technology kind of on my own. Uh, you know, yes. that, that really became a big part of my life. 
Uh, so I'm probably thinking something along those lines. Uh, not sure what the catchy word would be for it, for the experience, but... Uh, Maybe know. tech savvy? Or is it more so about, like, that you will learn things against all odds? Maybe against yeah. all odds. That's honestly probably a better better one there. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, that... We're not using this for this character, by the way. I'm just typing it in so that you guys at home can see. That's the concept, is that you, or Justin, right? Justin despite maybe not having grown up in a situation where things were as accessible against all odds he learned technology and that becomes a thing that you have shapes part of your life i agree with that i have like some people have learned helplessness i have the opposite i have you could do anything you know what i mean <laughs> Uh, one funny thing back to uh, playing RuneScape, that's where I like learned how to type like before I had a typing class in school. Uh, and so I like learned how to, I was just basically pecking. And I learned how to do that so well because I would have to, you know, play in RuneScape having to type fast before something bad would happen to my character. You know, I'm running somewhere. Uh, I got to the point when I, we got to our typing class in school, um, we had to do an initial like typing test, see how, how many words we can type uh a minute or like basically how many type how many words we can type a minute and uh she, teacher was trying to do that to like teach us like great we can't do you can't type very many words fast now but then at the end of the semester you know whatever later well after you've learned how to type you can compare it uh but yeah at the start i was typing 64 words a minute while pecking uh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. and then like yeah much later i you know learned how to type and then like later i took a test a few years back for something and i was doing a hundred and 120, 130 words a minute with like only Whoa! Like most of the mistakes I was getting were like I would type something, hit backspace, so it was count as two mistakes, and then you know fix and keep going. Um, yeah, I but, know. Yeah. Those are crazy that they want you to just move forward. That's so good. Wow. Yeah, I love that. And and again, this is another area where I think tabletop can teach you to like reflect and self audit yourself and and find the things that you're proud of in your own life and stuff that's a great experience to have for yourself against all odds so good okay so let's let's build the character because we're wrapping this guy up mm -hmm. what experiences are you thinking of you get to pick two what are you thinking first one came to me pretty easy the second one i'm still thinking on okay. uh first one i'm thinking just under your skin uh, can be, you know, a note easily growing under this dead captain's uh, body, but it's also like a way maybe to creep people out, yes. uh, you know, get under their skin. <laughs> yeah, succeed on like a presence check to like intimidate someone or maybe mm -hmm. even like, again, like you said, creep someone out. Uh, I could even see it being used for a combat maneuver if you were being like a wizard using power push or something, you mm -hmm. know, like that's, or Tava's armor. <gasps> Okay, cool. Under your skin is so good. Because remember, guys, these experiences have to tie into something you would roll with. And that's kind of the, the thing here is it can't be too broad, but it can't be so specific that it won't work, you know? So yeah, that's right. Right. You definitely want to try to lean into one that's like maybe one that's combat focused, maybe one that's navigation kind of focused, and yep. the one that's like social focused. Yeah. I think that one definitely works for the, the social side. I think so, too. Uh -huh. So second experience, and I know you're still thinking about this. This doesn't have to be the final. But yeah, just throwing one out, uh, like dead weight. Dead weight is good. Yeah, you, know, I... really, you know, really just you know sinking yourself into the ground, not letting like you know being unhelpful if someone's you know capturing you. Yeah, the um, other version yeah. of this, by the way, is sturdy. This is sturdy, but it's it's but it's punny, right? I love that. So good. And I'm also trying to keep all the ones I had uh, out of my head where I helped uh, another player make their fun girl character. He was a uh, he was a, a clown wizard fungus thing. Yes, that's uh, right. And, like, a lot of his were just like, uh, I'm just a fun guy, uh, yeah. clown school, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> love yeah. that. Okay, so those are your experiences. Guys, this takes us through the entire character there are pieces that obviously we've glanced over things like the description but we effectively have what is a character and you can even now go to your character sheet and Debbie Plane does a great job of showing you what this character looks like when put into a character sheet so again this is proof of concept right now but 
beginning soon. I won't be doing this all for Justin, although you will get this art. This is going to be your art and everything. But for people who come on the show and on this interview, I'm going to be transcribing this to a physical paper copy so that I can provide like a PDF version to our guests. And I'm going to be taking the art that Jocelyn or, for example, Britt, if she joins us, and taking that and sending it over to other people but you can see like for example you have a 10 evasion you have zero armor uh, which means you do it is not equipped uh, yeah. I, I have to just equip that so i i can fix that later but <laughs> proof of concept i have to remember how to equip the armor <laughs> um, i think it's just in the items uh to yeah, if you go to the equipment i think yep yeah guys i'm also a paper girl so i do not actually equip i don't use debbie plane very often there we go though yeah, really, i really like to do that it'll like cover the like one or two hands for you on the weapons and stuff yeah exactly but we can see all this information about your character at level one now you know the number of hit points you have your knowledge additions uh your hands are full with your great staff that you start with. You start with your two hope, and then you have all of the details at the very bottom. Um, uh, also, yes, uh, crazy Deadpool 99. Oh, I can see them being roots. <gasps> yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh. All right. So, yes, we're all, by the way, now moving over and talking more and more about Jocelyn's art. So we have this character sheet. We're at the hour. I think we're about ready to pull in. And Jocelyn, I see you going through speeding because you're you're wanting to get it's I need to let you know. Don't stress. This is freaking gorgeous. So. I'm going to go ahead and real quick, we're going to change a few things on my screen. I'm going to move this away. And then I'm going to sh move our art to the side so that I have the art. And then Jocelyn, I'm going to return you so that people can see you if you're comfortable. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay, Jocelyn. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We got that far. It's so cool justin thoughts give us your reaction I, awesome. so definitely awesome like i definitely like the roots kind of going out everywhere it's very cool oh. got, got got xena the rock bird oh um. can we get a zoom in of xena <laughs> there she is in all her glory the eyebrows the eyebrows Jocelyn, tell us, t talk to us a little bit about this art. Like, what inspired you? What you were really feeling here while you were making this? Yeah. So, in general, I'm a sucker for uh, just more villainous things. So, I like drawing a uh, not so great person that's, you know, looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, I, I do think mushrooms are really fun. I do like the concept of them, like, running up from the face, being in an accessible place. Like, I, I almost wish I knew the tidbit about like lopping off the components at the start because I think that would be a fun thing to potentially incorporate, like lop off a mushroom, cast a spell. Um, so I'm I'm considering changing a couple things to maybe hint at that a little bit because I think that's a fun a fun way to rig up that sort of magic casting. Um, but yeah, the the roots part on top of the mushrooms is more or less like I know you technically said you're giving up the the fungal network connection, but I don't know, perhaps a little trace of that remains in the mushrooms that grow on you. Definitely so. I am so blown away, Jocelyn, at this. And you are getting so much love in chat, by the way. MC Cat bursting out of the mushroom. Love this whole look. La Sombra, awesomeness. Bun Bun Riri, who is an artist herself. They've overtaken the jacket. We have Sierra saying, <laughs> amazing job. This is so, so good, Jocelyn. I would like Thank to. Thank you. For all of those of you who are watching this now here on Twitch, remember guys, this was live. Jocelyn created this live over the course of an hour. Um, for those of you who are watching now on Twitch or later on YouTube, Jocelyn is the artist responsible for our Ribbit artwork for our channel. And she is a friend of the channel. Um, we're gonna see her more in these kinds of capacities. I have her Instagram put into the chat. Go shoot her a follow. 
Jocelyn, are your commissions open at all? I, don't, I informally have commissions open if anyone's interested. Most of the stuff that I do is still like Dungeons and Dragons, but that said, I do in generally just enjoy TTRPG character design. So if anyone wants a character or an NPC drawn, I would be happy to consider doing that. Thanks so much, Jocelyn. Yeah, and guys, follow Jocelyn on Instagram at Doodles. Again, it's in here. She's also in our Discord, so you can ping her in there. She might not see it immediately. It'd probably go through the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm, I'm not the best at discord but i'm trying yeah well you you know like uh the final brain cell said i may reach out dot 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 for potential things so yeah yeah if you guys liked this and you're interested in seeing what jocelyn might be able to do for your art please reach out um because this is proof of concept by the way we haven't formalized all of the links and stuff but when it goes to youtube i'm gonna go ahead and make sure that oh my god the burb the burb is so good <laughs> When this goes to YouTube, I'm going to have a link to Jocelyn's uh, page for tipping in case anybody remember a lot of us that are in these space. This is our moonlighting gig. If you want to let us do more stuff like this, feel free to tip over on Jocelyn's page. You'll see that in the description on YouTube and on future things. I'll put commands in to make that easier as well. But all right, guys, Justin, how do you feel about your character? I'm pumped. Great. I'm excited to get to, get to Dagger Harden again. Get to Dagger Harden next week. Should be next week. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, guys. Well, that is our show. This was, again, proof of concept. I need to read out this last comment for Crazy Deadpool 899. I still can't believe this is only an hour worth of work. Mind blown. Truly, Jocelyn. It's an incredible job. Thank you. Yeah. Um, give us a, a zoom of that jawline for close out here. I need, I need to see. Oh, my God. It's so good the closer you get to it. Fantastic. Okay, guys. This is the proof of concept stream for our choose your fighter. Um, Dwayne DeBurb Johnson. I have to close out. This is our proof of concept for choose your fighter. You'll see more of this in the future, but I think that it's a pretty good show. So um, thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Justin, for joining tonight. Everybody that watched, thank you for following along with us. You'll see more of this. If you liked it, please join the discord and let us know that you liked it so that we can do more weird experimental stuff um, but otherwise i hope you'll have a great week um, go out there play more dagger heart support your artists like jocelyn uh, roll with hope and we will talk soon okay okay thanks everybody bye bye i guess bye. Fight!